Ladies and gents, doctors, patients, nurses, hospital administrators, welcome to Project Hospital. My name, of course, is Albert Potato. Project Hospital is a strategy management game that puts you in control of building and running a hospital, diagnosing patients and saving lives. And the reason that we're playing Project Hospital today is because there has just been some brand new DLC that has been released, and it is the Department for Infectious Diseases. That's right. If I go into the build mode, uh, you can see all of the buildings that come or all of the, the rooms that come as part of the Infectious Diseases DLC. And we're going to be opening up our very own Infectious Diseases Department and treating a whole bunch of weird and exotic pandemic-like cases, including COVID-19. So there you go. That's kind of fun. Uh, yeah, so uh, we are going to jump right on into things in just a second. I'm going to tutorialize a little bit because it's the first episode as ever. But before we get started, I should say that I do have a couple of mods installed. Um, if you are a supporter over on the Patreon, even at the $1 tier, you get access to the Patreon exclusive series. And uh, and that was recently Project Hospital, and we had a whole bunch of mods installed over there. Uh, I've sort of toned it back a little bit, but something that I have uh, maintained is a huge number of additional insurance companies. Just because I think it's fun to aim for something, uh, it will sort of affect the game in terms of we should be able to make a little bit more money as there's going to be more patients coming into our hospital. But it's always good to it's always good to sort of aim for something, I think. And, uh, and the insurance companies give you objectives to hit and they give you more objectives to hit or the mods give you more objectives to hit. Anyway, let's, let's chat about designing a hospital. So the first thing that we want to do is we probably just want to get like a good base down. I'm just going to build a big old square in the middle of this field that we've got. It's a 96 by 96 field. Now, we're probably going to want to keep this area over here reserved for either ambulance parking or in the future, like rooms which deal directly with patients out of the ambulance. Uh, but for now, we just need to we just need to worry about like the very very basic levels of uh, of treatment that a hospital can offer. And the most basic levels of treatment that a hospital can offer is emergency clinic care. Literally, just doctors' offices, a waiting room, a reception, a cleaning closet. I mean, that's that's about it. That's about it. That's all we really need to. That's all we really need to do. Uh, also, some amenities wouldn't go amiss. You know, a restroom, uh, a common room, perhaps for the staff, something like that. Now, every department, every department has got a a clinic sort of function, and then it's also got a hospitalization sort of function. And we are going to try our very best to unlock the hospitalization function through the insurance menu. Anyway, so what are we going to do? We can actually build. We can actually build a doctor's office from a prefab here. Now, I don't usually like building from prefabs. However, there is a massive upside to building from prefabs in that it uh, it gives you everything that you need straight away and should allow us... Yeah, look at that. Okay, so we'll buy we'll buy a couple of doctor's offices. We'll buy three doctor's offices. That sounds that sounds absolutely adequate. We're going to change the color of these walls because I hate the color of these walls. Uh, let me rotate, see what they look like from this side. Uh, they don't look too bad on, on that side, but... Yeah, we might uh, we might change the color of these walls. Anyway, some doctor's offices, always good, always good to do. Uh, we've got three of them. We're going to need to get ourselves a waiting room as well. Now, we can build ourselves a waiting room if we want to through this menu right here. But, you know, I'm kind of conscious of the fact that maybe we don't want to make sure, maybe we don't want to make the entirety of our hospital just a, a prefab building. But at the same time, the advantage to using prefabricated buildings is that it improves the decor of the area. It's very, very difficult in this game, actually, to improve the decor of a certain area. But you know what? We're going to give it our, we're going to give it our best shot. Let's see if we can make, uh, oh, that is awful. That is dreadful. But you know what? That's, that's decent. I feel like that's a, an appropriately garish hospital color lino flooring, at least. And then what I want to do, I think, is we want to see if we can zone a reception. Where's the entrance to the building? Is this going to be the entrance to the building over here? Sure. This can be the entrance to the building. Let's keep the corridors 4x4 four four wide. Let's make that like a little reception room. And then we'll make a slightly larger waiting room over here. Uh, let's make sure that the reception room is filled with the appropriate, the appropriate equipment. We just need like a single reception desk. We need like a stool right there and we need like a computer on the table and that's pretty much it that's pretty much it for a for a reception room obviously there are walls that need to be that need to be erected i have actually i haven't actually built any walls around this building yet but it's okay we haven't unpaused there is still there is still hope for us yet right so 
good number of good number of chairs in the waiting room. That seems entirely reasonable. There's also something else that I can stick in the waiting room, and that is an automated queuing machine with corresponding television, uh, which of course needs a wall to be stuck on, irritatingly, but that's fine. All right, what do we want? Colored, colored exterior uh, wall brick base. Sure, let's go for that. Let's go for that. That looks kind of funky, and when we Oh, oh, yeah, funky is the, the correct term, actually. That is, that is, that is an ugly wall. That is a, a very, very, very ugly wall. But that's okay. This is just the, this is just the first bit of the hospital. It's, it can only get better from here, right? Famous last words, etc. Aluminium panels, aluminium colored panels. No, you know what? Let's go for some, like, nice wood texture. Sure, what the heck? Uh, there's no need to, there's no need to put a wall in here. I'm gonna stick a wall in here just because I want to stick a door in here. So we're gonna get a double glass door right over there. We're gonna get a sliding double glass door over there. Look at this. This actually looks like a proper little clinic. I'm I'm pretty happy with this. Okay. Uh, good. So is that everything? Is that everything that is required in order to make a clinic work? Uh, we need a cleaning closet, but that is not too 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 difficult to come by. I guess the cleaning closet can just go in here. Yeah. Sure, let's make it a little bit bigger because I, I know for a fact that we're going to almost certainly need more uh, janitorial staff in the future because things get really, 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 really dirty in this game. There we go. Dirty in a very, very bad way. Yeah, dirty in a bad way. Dirty in the not fun bad way. Is there any... Is there any fun, fun, dirty way? I, I don't know. Anyway, we got plenty of cash. We got plenty of cash. The game has not been unpaused yet, so, you know, we're just getting the very most basic bits that we need in order to make this hospital function. Right, okay, so if we go into the emergency, uh, the emergency, the emergency management mode area over here, we got a waiting room, we got three doctor's offices, we got a reception, we got a cleaning closet, we don't have a restroom quite yet, and we also need to hire a whole bunch of staff, which is, as it turns out, pretty darn important, really, you can't have, you can't have a clinic, you can't have a hospital without any staff. It's, it's, it's impossible. It's impossible. What the heck is this biohazard area? Oh goodness gracious me! We're gonna have a, we're gonna have a biohazard area. Something about this brand new DLC. Uh, it allows you to specify where you want your staff to wear masks, and uh, well, I don't want my staff to wear masks over here. But th this is something that, this is. There we go. Undo that. This is, you know, this is something that we'll need to consider a lot going forward, uh, especially when we've got patients coming in with, uh, you know, contagious pandemic-like symptoms. Either way, let's see if we can go into the prefabs. Maybe see if we can try and get ourselves a restroom. I want to get a prefabricated restroom. Again, I feel like the prefabs do a really, really great job. Maybe in the corner over here. Is that a four-wide corridor? That's a four-wide corridor. That's pretty good, actually. That's pretty darn good. Costs us hardly anything as well. So we'll throw that down. Anything else that we really need? I mean, a common room would not be the worst thing in the world to get right now. Just, you know, show the doctors that I do actually care about them. A common room would be good, a common room would be good, but do I want it to be there or do I want it to be like here? I think I would rather have a common room right there. So we'll place that, that'll automatically build the additional foundations for us, although I'm gonna also build more foundations and then I'm going to immediately remove that wall that I uh, that I built over there, but that's fine. You know, this is just the, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. Onwards and upwards from here, etc. All right, and then let's also see if we can get some of this hideous flooring back. Oh, that is that is so awful. That is so awful. It makes my eyes cry. That's doesn't sound like a controversial statement. It makes my eyes hurt. Okay, well, I think we're pretty much ready to, to, to go, to be honest. Um, it's good to allocate this area as a corridor just to be on the safe side because otherwise the janitorial staff sometimes have issues cleaning it. So we'll get this area allocated as a corridor, this area allocated as a corridor too. We're probably going to end up building something over here, but, I mean, look, this area is going to get expanded. This is just the, the very most basic, the very most basic clinic that we possibly can have. Right. So, should we hire our first doctor? Let's hire our first doctor. Who do we want to hire? Somebody cheap, ideally. Somebody cheap, but not terrible. Frank Hall, you're not exactly, you're not exactly bad. Uh, Jessica Garcia, you are the cheapest, so let's hire you. Cool. The hospital now accepts patients. First insurance companies are automatically contracted. Let's go into insurance management in just a second. We will indeed. Thank you very much for that video game. I'm going to hire a nurse for the reception. 
uh, the receptionist traits. Uh, the receptionist trait is what we're after. The, the higher the trait level, the better a job that they will do in that respective role. So for example, we hired this doctor who has got 0% quality or 0% specialization in general medicine, which is going to make uh, Jessica Garcia not a great, not a great clinic doctor, but you know, decent enough. We'll also hire one janitor as well. Efficiency, dexterity are the traits that are uh, that are assigned to janitors. That is totally fine in my books. Are we ready to unpause? We're almost ready to unpause here, I think. Okay, treat one patient per day at emergency, and we are going to get a twenty thousand dollar government grant, which is very, very nice indeed. It's worth noting straight off the bat that we can take up to. I think it's five hundred thousand dollars out in uh, out in a loan. We only pay the interest at the end of the day. So at midnight on any given day, we can just use this as a we can just use this as a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a bridging loan. But you know you got to be careful with that term. Got to be careful with that term bridging loan. It's it's very easy to to get lost in the loans if you know what I mean. Anyway, we've got twenty patients, twenty patients that are going to be visiting the clinic each and every day, which is pretty darn good. Uh, this is the number of patients that have been treated successfully. This is the number of patients that have been treated unsuccessfully. We'll talk a little bit about ambulances and getting all of that stuff set up as we go. But for now, things are looking things are looking pretty darn good. How many patients have we got coming in? Charles Anderson, you are going to be the first patient that we get. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit about the treatment process as we go. Uh, the thing that I do want to do that I haven't really considered is that I should see if I could get a path. A concrete pavement? Concrete pavement? How much is a concrete pavement going to cost me? 700 bucks? I mean, that sounds entirely reasonable. I keep on pausing for some or going back to the start menu for some obscene reason. Either way, that looks kind of nice. It would be kind of nice to develop a little park around here. We can build some outdoor decorations, but I'm not particularly bothered about doing that. Let's swap it into double time speed. No need to go OTT. All right, so what's going to happen is that this patient is going to be triaged in reception. The important thing about the reception uh, area is that we don't actually need it. Ah... The, the thing the thing about the reception is uh, is that we don't actually need it, but it helps to determine the severity, or should I say, the seriousness of the patient's condition. As you can see, Charles Anderson has either got golfer's elbow or elbow bursitis. No idea what that is. Either way, uh, that is going to be totally fine. Oh, also, the doctor has to come to the waiting room and call Charles Anderson. However, if I uh, if I go into the build menu and if I get an info TV, then that means that as soon as a patient comes into this room, they will take a ticket on the machine and then the doctor will be able to call them from the comfort of their computer and therefore that's going to cut down on that's going to cut down on this uh, on this whole walking to the waiting room and calling the patient sort of thing. Right, so, Charles Anderson, you're going to be called, you're going to be diagnosed 100% with golfer's elbow. How do I know this? Well, 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 I'll tell you why. If we go into this little, uh, this little button up here, open the diagnosis table, you can see what tests will help to determine what the patient has. So if we were to do elbow stiffness test, or no, sorry, these are the, uh, these are the symptoms. These are the symptoms. What am I thinking of? Yeah, so if the if we can uncover some more symptoms by doing some more tests, then we will be able to determine if it's golfer's elbow or elbow bursitis. Either way, the reason that I know it's golfer's elbow is because the game will only present you with illnesses that you can actually treat. So, for example, this, this elbow bursitis thing can only be treated at uh, an, orthopedics, an orthopedics clinic, which is an, an, another entirely different department that we haven't got access to yet. We will, but not yet. So uh, it's got to be golfer's elbow, basically. Uh, now, I could jump in right here and say, hey, it's golfer's elbow. Congratulations, you're going to get treated. And you know what? Maybe I should do that because I, I know that that's, that that's what it is. Um, so, yeah, I can do that. I can intervene. I can intervene in any... Uh, in any treatment that I wish to, I can take over control of a of a patient's care, default patient, or I can do uh, favorite patient controlled by player. Yeah, so that's that's something that I can do. We got a lot of patients coming in here, which is exactly why I got like a bunch of additional uh, doctors' offices. Let's hire the cheapest doctors, please. Thank you very much, and thank you very much. Excellent. Now, that's two additional doctors. You're playing solitaire on your computer. You look like you're browsing YouTube. Is it youtube.com forward slash robot potato? Very well might be. If so, exquisite taste, my friend. Uh, let's get these patients called. Brilliant. We've completed an objective. Treat one patient per day at emergency, and that gives us $20,000. Good start. Very, very good start. We also get the insurance payment as well, which is very, very nice indeed. Uh, we need to open a radiology clinic as part of, as part of our mission as part of our mission for cheapo care, we need to treat three patients in order to open up the uninsured 
insurance option or the uninsured contracted company. Uh, we're probably going to hit that by the end of today. The radiology clinic is going to be expensive because x-ray machines, CT scanners, etc. All very, very expensive bits of equipment. I think that we should manage to get by with just three doctors at this moment in time. Yeah, that seems fine. We also need to open a general surgery clinic for the progressive insurance objective. Just down at the bottom here, it's a little bit difficult to see, but you get the picture, right? And that's going to give us a 20,000 government grant as well. General surgery is... It's, it's, it's a big one. It's a big one for sure. Who are you? Casey Green. Nice. You're just going straight to the chair. You're not even going to be triaged by the, uh, by the receptionist. That's a bit, it's a bit rude, isn't it? That's a bit flippin' rude. Either way, this is looking, this is looking pretty darn good. There's no clear diagnosis. Ooh, okay. So, this is because, this is because we do not have a medical laboratory department or a radiology department. So, foot contusion or or bones fracture. Uh, well, we know it's a, a foot contusion. I know for a fact that it is a foot contusion and we're going to treat that with numbing ointment. That's what it tells me to treat it with. Uh, it can't be this one, again, because we don't have an or orthopedics clinic. However, it would be good if we could if we could actually x-ray the lower limb to uh, to determine what the issue is. And we can't do that at the moment because we don't have a radiology department. So a little bit of a little bit of a bummer right there, but that's fine. Let's wait until we've treated our third patient because then that'll get us uh, another insurance objective unlocked. There we go. Insurance company uninsured can be contracted to send patients. Brilliant. So what we're going to do is we are going to enable the accepting of patients, which unlocks for example, another insurance objective, which is great, and also allows us to uh, to get more patients sent to the clinic, which is pretty darn good. Now, opening a radiology clinic is, it's not difficult per se, but it is, it is expensive. It is expensive. What do we need in order to open up a radiology, in order to uh, open up a radiology clinic? We need a waiting room, we need an x-ray room, CT room, MRI room, cardiography, and a sonography unit. I mean, do we want to have an x-ray wing? Is that what we want? As I say, this area is... This area is reserved for trauma centers in the future because trauma centers are where we uh, deposit patients after they climb out of an ambulance. I mean, maybe like up here, maybe we just get like a, a big old... A big old area up at the top here. We're almost certainly going to have to take out a loan, by the way, in order to... Uh, in order to in order to build a radiology clinic. Also, how are we doing? How are we doing in terms of prestige? Prestige is pretty darn important. There's no clear diagnosis. I know that you've got golfer's elbow. We'll treat you for golfer's elbow. We'll give you an ice wrap. You've already been diagnosed an ice wrap. There we go. So I can jump in and help out if it is required, and it does seem to be fairly frequently required. How are we doing with just three doctor's offices? Now, I'm a little bit worried that people are going to start to leave because they've been waiting for too long. Nail fungus or athlete's foot? Ooh, okay, so myco mycocologic sampling. We can't actually do this because we do not have a we do not have we do not have a, 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 a medical labs department. I mean, we can just treat with antifungal ointment, right? It doesn't really matter what the what the treatment option is. We can just treat them with antifungal. Ambiguous results? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, Casey Green, what your ambiguous results are, because we're going to be treating you with antifungal ointment all the same. So, you know, it's a it's a broad spectrum approach. We just completed another insurance objective, which gives us a huge amount of money, takes us right back up to the uh, to the starting uh, to the starting amount of cash that we had, which is great. gives me a gives me a good reason to open up a radiology a radiology department. Right. So. So, 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 so. What is the core of a radiology department? It's a CT room, an MRI room, an X-ray room, and a CAG room. Like, that is what's important, right? So if I go into radiology, we'll go into the prefabs. I can build all of the buildings myself, by the way. Do I necessarily want to? As I've already said, no. It's, it's a dangerous game. It's a dangerous game to play. It's a dangerous game to play. Okay. X-ray room. Give me an x-ray room. How much did that cost me? That cost me 23 grand. That was actually, like, remarkably cheap. Let's go for a CAG room. 34 grand. Very, very expensive. The CT room? 50 grand. That's how much it costs. 50 flippin' grand. 
but you know what? We're going to do it nonetheless. We're going to do it nonetheless. That takes us down into very, very, very negative cash territory. Um, do I want to take out a loan in order to in order to do this? Yeah, I, I think I do. I mean, look, I've committed now, so in for a penny, in for a pound, in for a cent, in for a dollar. Is that something that people say? I, I don't know. All right, MRI room. That cost me 60 grand. I'm going to need to take out yet more loans. Okay, I'm already $100,000 in debt, and we are 20 minutes into the episode. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. It's going to be another classic Orbital Potato series, isn't it? You can you can just tell. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, look. Building via... Building via, uh, what do you call it, prefab, was something that I was opposed to for a, for a decently long time. Okay, am I actually going to go more into debt? I am going to go more into debt. Thank you for asking. Uh, yeah, building by prefab was something that I was opposed to for a, for a decently long time. However, I've come to realize that, you know, the game is, the game is very, 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 very brutal when it comes to, when it comes to prestige acquisition. We can talk about this right now, actually. Uh, if I go into the emergency department, yeah, you can see. Here's the issue. So, staff absolutely despise an ugly environment, and the ugly environment is one of the major ways that we can that we can stop our prestige from growing into a, a truly great place. Nice environment, some staff think that it's a nice environment. The reason that it's a nice environment is because I've built all of this via prefab. You know, the, the ugly environment is probably the fact that I've left a massive, big old lino floor covered space in the foyer. Uh, also, two of my staff are depressed, which is also, you know, it's not ideal. Not ideal at all. Now, I'm going to build a 4x4, 4x4 hallway down here. Excellent. That's good. And we're going to build another hallway right over there. Excellent. So, what does that leave us with? That leaves us with, well, I mean, almost no money, in fact. I mean, what are the chances of me just completing another insurance objective and making a little bit more money? I mean, not great, to be honest. The next money is going to come after we open the radiology clinic. So I think, you know, we just need to double down here and uh, and see if we can try and see if we can try and open this clinic as soon as we possibly can. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. Back to radiology. What else do we need? We got a CT. We got an MRI. We got a cardiography. We got a sonography. Yeah, we got all of that. Uh, cleaning closet. We don't have a cleaning closet. We don't have a waiting room. Right. Take out more loans. Give me, like, okay, that is the maximum, that is the maximum allowable loan in the current circumstances. I refuse to, I refuse to, to take more out. Right, let's go for something like that. The reason that something like that, or the size of that is, is important. We're gonna, we're gonna modify this existing structure. We're gonna change the floor tiles in here. However, we're not gonna worry about that too, too much at this moment in time. Let's stick with this horrific wall because if we have any part of our hospital that is exposed to the outside, then unbelievably, patients and staff will both start to complain. And I don't really want that to happen. You know, believe it or not, I don't really want that to happen. Uh, now, we don't have the opportunity to build a... I miscounted this one two three four no I haven't miscounted this this is totally fine we don't have the opportunity to build a reception as the reason that people are referred to the radiology clinic is because they've got something wrong with them so we're just gonna go for something like this there we go I actually think that this is gonna be a pretty efficient way to set up the chairs in this area look at this look at this look at this look at this this is looking real good oh it's perfect it's perfect. It's almost like I planned this, except I actually didn't. Either way, we're going to keep this area open. We're going to get a nice colored floor. Is a, is a floor tile really important at this moment in time? Let's get a nice orange. Let's get nice orange uh, tiles or something. Sure, let's go for that. Yeah, our floor tiles important at a time like this? I mean, not necessarily. Not necessarily at all. All right. That's looking good. It's, it's pretty pale orange, gotta be honest, but that's fine. Either way, are we are we ready to open? We are ready to open. What we just need is is a couple of, uh, of radiologists. Radiologists are required in each and every one of these rooms. Now, radiologists are uh, are just are just the uh, the staff that deal with the patients as they come to a specified room. Now, this is going to increase. Okay, first of all. Great, thank you very much for that money. Uh, it's going to increase the cost of running my hospital 
a lot, but that is fine, and that is just a cost that we have to bear. I'm just getting the absolute cheapest people that are remotely qualified for this job. That's right. Cheapest people. You're qualified. Congratulations. You're just out of school. You're put in charge of half a flipping department. So there we go. Okay, so now this gives the doctors a huge amount of extra of extra tests that they can run. So this guy, for example, he's either got bronchitis or sarcoidosis of the lungs. Well, we know he's got bronchitis because bronchitis can be treated by the emergency department, whereas sarcoidosis can only be treated by internal medicine. However, if we want to run an MRI, we totally, totally, totally can. Now, something that we should do, which is just a nice little bonus, is that we should assign a chief doctor. We should assign a chief doctor to look or to oversee the department. Who's it going to be? Robert Hall? I mean, nobody is really qualified here. Frank Hall, I guess, you're slightly more qualified than everyone else. Sure, you can be the chief doctor, and that's going to boost prestige just a little bit. Prestige, we're looking for 100% each and every day is what we're after. Now, uh, common room, do you have access to the common room? I think that you might have access to the common room. We're probably going to want to get a radiology restroom, and we're also probably going to want to get a... Uh, a radiology common room as well something along these lines definitely something that we're interested in now hold up Casey Green you left because we weren't able to diagnose if you had nail fungus or athlete's foot I gave you antifungal treatment though I I did prescribe that that's what I prescribed and that was that would definitely have treated you it, it doesn't actually matter it doesn't actually matter if you had that or didn't have so that's that's irritating we need to try and get no untreated patients for seven days in order to allow us to unlock what is it the Research Grant Institute. Interestingly, the Research Grant Institute gives you 180% of insurance payments. The more, the more this, the, the more this number is, the bigger this number is, the more likely I am to try and focus on making sure that we get patients from that specific insurance group, because each different insurance group pays a different amount of insurance monies. So it's important that we're prioritizing the patients that are paying more. It is, because otherwise we're uh, we're not going to make money. Anyway, let's see if we can pay down our debt. Okay, we only have a hundred thousand dollars of debt at the end of at the end of today, which is uh, which is not too bad. What's the what's the happiness looking like in the emergency department? Honestly, it's not as great as it could be. Why are people why are people upset? Mostly because they're depressed. That's why they're not satisfied with their job. But that's fine. It's only two o'clock in the afternoon. There's plenty of uh, there's plenty of prestige to be earned over the course of the day. 75. I mean, if we could get up to 95, that would be excellent. What do we got? Athlete's foot or nail fungus? I mean, look, this is just... This is just... This is just a... I mean, it's a... It's it's just a... It's just a... a you know, a shot in the dark. It really is. You may end up being treated incorrectly, but I think it's probably important that we try and diagnose you, at least in the first instance. Opening up a medical labs clinic is our next objective, and that's going to give us, you know, a 500,000 government grant, which is kind of nice. We do want that. Oh, fantastic. Uninsured, we've got uh, treat 15 patients per day, and the reward is to increase clinic patients per day to 15, which is good. So tomorrow, this number is going to be 15, which is very, very important. The more patients that we're able to see, the more that we're able to treat, the better, the more money we've got the potential to make. However, there does come a point where, I think the point has already come, where we're not able to treat patients because we're just not able to see, we're not able to see as many patients as we actually have. Mark, I mean, you're still waiting in the clinic. You're being called at long last, but I mean, it's pretty clear that we are already, that we are already a little bit short staffed. There's no clear diagnosis. Okay, there seems to be some sort of like nail fungus epidemic going around. Antifungal ointments, sure. Just treat you, uh, send you home, excellent. Insurance company, Medicare can be contracted to send patients now. Brilliant, and I think that that was because we treated a certain number of patients. Excellent, we gotta be careful with Medicare. We gotta be very, very careful because treating 25 patients per day um, is is not difficult. We can definitely achieve that objective. We can definitely get the government grant. That's not, not a problem at all. The problem is, is that if we accept Medicare patients, that's going to bump our patient numbers up to 50, which is, which is honestly quite a lot. That is, that is quite a lot of patients given that we only have like three doctors. You know, we got to be careful. We got to be very, 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 very careful. There was still one patient waiting at the end of the day. I mean, that's fine. It's the end of, it's the end of the, uh, the opening hours. But that is, that is not a problem at all. We can, we can, we can, we can, I believe, 
we can, I believe, get the get the uh, the hospital to be open at 24 hours a day. However, that will have to that will have to wait for a little bit. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to do that later. Right, treating 30 patients per day should not be should not be an impossibility. Far from it. Prestige wise, how are we doing? 95% prestige. I mean, look, that's just about as good as it gets, frankly. That is just about as good as it gets. Very, very happy with that. Everyone is going to swap over at the end of the shift. Okay, this is important. We'll talk a little bit about this in a second. But basically, the night shift goes from 8 o'clock in the evening to 7 o'clock in the morning. And the day shift goes from 7 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock in the evening. Fine, right? Uh, we don't have any night staff at this moment in time, so everyone should leave. Uh, I will be able to employ night staff at some point in the future, and I will definitely do that. Uh, it's always good to get janitors to come in over the course of the evening as well. That's uh, that's, a, that's a good opportunity, a good opportunity there. Uh, but yeah, this is this is good. This is a good a good first day. What I should do before the end of the day is pay down my loan. As I've already mentioned, you only pay interest on outstanding monies at midnight. So if I skip forward, there we go. Boom, we end up paying our uh, our loan. Okay, daily news. A terrible article about your facility in a tabloid causes 25% of patients to go to a different hospital. Is that necessarily a problem? I don't think that that's necessarily a problem, to be honest. I could just take on additional patients from um, uh, additional Medicare patients. So you know what? I'll do that. That will, as I say, bump my, uh, bump my patient numbers up a lot. However, the reason that I'm okay with that is because... Is because we uh, is because we've got a 25% reduction and therefore I don't have to deal with as many patients as I would under normal circumstances. Cool. All right, let's get forward to the morning. We do want to open a medical labs clinic at some point today. Uh, I did mention that I would talk about critical critical workloads. So critical workloads are never something that you want to see. If we go into the management mode over here, we can actually hover over the offices and see what the what the needs are, just where my mouse pointer is, shows you the workload during the day and the workload during the night. The workload during the day, as you can see, is critical. The workload is high, and the workload is high over here. The work, uh, the workload at night is is very very low. So, I mean, what this is saying to me, at least, is that we need to get ourselves, we need to get ourselves some more, some more doctors' offices. Like there is no, there is no way about, there's no way, uh, there's no way about it. We need to sort it out. Right, doctors' office six by six. doctor's office in here I mean sure yeah I, I don't necessarily hate that it doesn't line up though I'm just realizing this or maybe it does line up I think it I think it might actually line up hold up let me go into let me go into this uh, let me see if I can adjust the corridor there we go okay so yeah it actually it actually would line up if I'm careful about this Right, so two doctor's offices in here. Is that reasonable? Oh wow, that's actually that's actually a great fit. That's actually a great fit. Costs hardly anything. Doctor's offices are ridiculously cheap for for what they are. Uh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna hire somebody who is like ridiculously qualified at general medicine. I'm gonna hire Sarah Allen. Now, Sarah Allen is gonna be the most expensive hire that we've made thus far. 86%. 86% qualification or 86% specialization in acute medicine which is exactly what we, or general medicine, should I say, which is exactly what we want. Uh, and then we'll just hire a super cheap intern uh, over here. Then, Frank Hall, I'm afraid, you're going to be replaced with Sarah Allen, who is a esteemed, esteemed, well-qualified doctor. There we go. And so she should help as chief doctor steer the, steer the ship in the right direction, which is, which is looking pretty darn good. If I do say so myself. Right. Let's get, let's get, uh, let's get all of the all of the doctors, all of the technologists in, and let's see what the day brings. We're looking to see if we can try and treat absolutely everyone. It's probably, it's probably time to get a medical lab. We're also probably going to manage to treat patients, or treat 30 patients per day. That's almost certainly going to happen. Also, look at this. Bonus objective, 1 out of 49. So we're able to get 49 additional objectives from uh, from Medicare, which is exactly what some of the mods that I've got installed do. They just increase the number of uh, of bonus objectives, which I think is kind of nice. You know, it's, it's kind of nice to do. Right. I mean, we've got all of this radiology equipment. None of it's really being used at this moment in time. However, it almost certainly will end up being used uh, at some point. So... We got to stay on the lookout for uh, for that. 
Uh, and we gotta we gotta stay on top of how often it does get used, because no doubt it will it will get to a point where we've got where we've got a lot of the stuff, a lot of the a lot of the stuff being used at the same time. Um, okay, medical labs. Where do we want to get medical labs? I mean, we could get a second floor. That's something to consider, right? You know, we could we could get an early second floor. I'm not super against that, to be honest. Yeah, so add a floor. Copy tiles from the top floor or copy walls. I don't really want to copy walls, but I'm not I'm not against that, to be honest. Building a new floor doesn't actually cost us anything. Yeah, okay, sure. So we've now got we've now got a second floor, which is looking a little bit a little bit janky because there shouldn't actually be a door here, per se. Oh, that was window. Were that windows? Glass wall. Sure, we can put windows in here. Okay, weird, 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 weird. Anyway, so now we can toggle between the bottom floor, which is fully in use, and also the top floor over here. Now, obviously, we're not going to add an entirely, an entirely brand new radiology department. We're not going to have a radiology department on every floor. Dinny be daft. Dinny be daft. Uh, we're just going to get what we need. And again, we're going to do it with prefabs. Again, because I feel like this is just the best way. This is just the best way of, uh, of going about doing this. Now... Do I want to build... Do I want to build big labs? I think I want to build big labs, to be honest. Now, the problem is that these big labs cost, like, a ridiculously large amount of money. Like, an obscenely large amount of money. What I think we should probably do in the first instance is... Let's clear up... Let's clear up all of these... All of these walls here. And then I think that this is the area where... We get big labs. Big labs, big money. And something that I should mention that I, I didn't really highlight is that we're after scalability, right? We want to make sure that our hospital is able to deal with five patients just as well as it's able to deal with 500 patients. A little bit of an over-exaggeration there, but I think you get the picture, right? So, what do we need? What do we need in order to make this to make this area work? We need a hematology lab, a microbiology lab, a histology lab, and a waiting room. That's basically it. So, I guess a waiting room could be could be over here. Uh, it's the same place, literally, as the as the radiology department. The radiology department and the medical labs department are both very, very similar in a weird, weird way. Neither neither department can enable hospitalization, unlike emergency, which can enable hospitalization. The radiology department and the medical labs department exist to supplement the level of care provided by other departments, so to speak. General surgery, uh, intensive care, internal medicine, orthopedics, cardiology, neurology, infectious diseases, presumably. Uh, you know, all of these departments exist to exist to actually treat patients. Radiology just helps to inform the other patients, or the other departments, and so do medical labs. Uh, right. Medical labs. This is a medical labs waiting room, I think. Yep. I think that was zoned correctly. Brilliant. That's looking good. Now, let's go into prefabs and let's see what we can get. Oh, this is going to cost me. This is going to cost me an arm and a leg, isn't it? Right, let's take out another big old loan. Another old, another old big bridging loan. And then let's have a little look what we're playing around with here. A hematology lab. Big old hematology lab. Let's go for that. 30 grand just down the drain, just like that. Microbiology lab. Boom. Another 30 grand just down the drain. And a histology lab. Boom. Another 30 grand. Or sorry, only 25 grand on that time. Look, looks great. Anyway, this is so much more intricate. This is so much more incredibly, incredibly well built than I could uh, than I could ever build. So, I mean, that's why that's why I'm keen. That's why I'm keen to use prefabs. As I say, I resisted using prefabs for a long time. If you've been watching the Patreon exclusive series, you'll have seen that I did a lot of the building myself. And, you know, you can see how that turned out. It was fun. It was good. It was... It was nice to do. However, at some point, you just got to realize the game is what it is. And sometimes you just got to... You just got to... Mm, you just got to do what you got to do. Uh, now, I'm going to extend this out here just a little bit. I know this is a little bit funky. The waiting room is going to be expanded up that way. Cool. Right, now, this entire area is inaccessible for patients. That is because we do not have an elevator at this moment in time. Where would I like to stick in an elevator? Well, the game can't tell me where to place an elevator. I'm going to be placing an elevator all by myself. I think an elevator going, what, like in here would be pretty good? 
So let's place it down right over yonder. And so that's going to appear on the second floor as well. And that's just sort of a semi-independent elevator shaft. And it should make everywhere accessible. Speaking of accessible, the medical labs department should be accessible as soon as we get uh, a couple of technologists to turn the department on. It's worth bearing in mind that I'm only going to hire one one technologist for each of these different rooms. It's actually really difficult to see what the rooms are because of the because of the placement of these uh, of these of these windows here. But that's fine. We're just going to hire one technologist. There we go. Open Medical Labs Clinic, a 50,000 uh, government grant, which is excellent. That's really, really good. So one, one technologist at each, at each room, uh, and again, you know, that can scale as we get, as we get more. Look at that. That looks very, very organized, very, very professional, very, very good. Testing takes rather a long time, so we got to be careful about that. Honestly, though, I feel like with the number of doctor's offices that I've got, we're going to be fine. I'm going to pay down my debt. So I'm only $100,000 in debt. It's actually remarkably cheap to to keep debt in this game. But again, you know, we don't want to get out of control. Now, we're looking to try, we're looking to try and make sure that not a single patient goes untreated. And to be honest, the fact that we've now got a a single department which does the which does the treating and then we've got all other departments which sort of supplement that what with x-rays, CAG scans, MRIs, etc. And now the medical labs department too. I don't think we've had a single patient up to medical labs. We'll be able to see uh, over here. This is the total number of patients in any given room. This little little box, little television-like looking box. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, not exactly, that's not exactly bad at all. Very, very happy with that. One thing that I do worry about is the fact that we've got a huge number. We've got a huge number of patients that are waiting to see doctors. I wonder if it's just worth us getting a couple of additional doctor's offices. I almost think that it certainly is. Yeah, I I think that we do want to build some additional doctor's offices, actually. Right. Yeah. Go with that there. And then I'm out of money. Uh, okay, well, you know what? Let's Let's take out two additional loans. This is going to become somewhat of a frequent occurrence, I would suspect. Uh, you know what? We'll just get three doctor's offices over there. That seems entirely reasonable. Cut this off right there and give me some more foundations. Brilliant. Then give me some horrific pink lino flooring. It's technically red. Technically red. That's the wrong type of flooring. I can't believe... I can't believe it. Undo that. There we go. We gotta make sure... We gotta make sure that we get that... That right type of flooring. You know? Right. Corridor. Get this zoned as a corridor. Make sure that there are walls. Because otherwise people seemingly are very unhappy with me. Don't know why. People just don't like to be outside when they... When they're actually inside. Who the heck knew? Alright. Doctor time. Oh, we got expensive doctors on this occasion. That's that's fine. I mean, I can re-roll the doctors, but I don't really want to do that. We'll just hire three people, whoever whoever the cheapest folk are. That's fine. And that should allow us to process like a heck of a lot more patients, a heck of a lot more swiftly. And to be honest, it's it's a nice design that we've got going here. I feel like this hospital is is looking is looking good actually. We still have rather a lot of patients to, to care for, though, which does perturb me slightly. Uh, the other thing that we need to consider is we're going to need to make sure that we get sort of janitorial offices for um, the radiology area and the medical labs area. We also have to be on the lookout for patients that are just, like, going to leave the clinic because they've just waited for too long. I would expect to see that happening from time to time. Because it's not exactly it's not exactly ideal. We should get a notification about it though. We should get a notification about it. So I'm hoping that we that we don't have any red patients by the end of today. Either, you know, incorrect diagnosis or untreated patients. We just want to make sure we want to make sure that it's all that it's all dealt with appropriately. But so far so good. 17 out of the 44 patients treated. Doesn't look like we've got a capacity issue. Not not yet anyway. Everyone seems to be Everyone seems to be seen fairly regularly. Um, Fraser Martin, 
you're going to get called, you're going to get diagnosed, arm contusion, numbing ointment, uh, prescribed treatment, etc. That's really good. That's really, really good. Yep, that is, that is really, really excellent. Brilliant. Uh, objective for insurance companies being completed. Treat 25 patients per day, a $15,000 government grant, which is very, very good. What's the next objective? It's to treat 30 patients per day, and that will increase clinic patients per day to, uh, to 25%. That's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. That's not too bad at all. And there we go. We did it. So we're we're now able to accept more patients from, uh, from Medicare. Treat 30 patients per day. Yep, brilliant. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Let's keep ticking off these objectives. Treat 35 patients per day, a $35,000 government grant. Don't mind if I do. Brilliant. Treat 35 patients per day. Prestige bonus, 20% for one day. And a $35,000 government grant. Okay, I apparently am just smashing through these insurance objectives faster than it's even possible for me to read them. I mean, I will say that it is almost unusual that things are looking so good on, like, what, day two? It does feel good. It does feel very, very good. In fact, we've almost treated every single patient. Another one? What the heck is going on? All right, so what is next on the agenda? Oh, increase patient clinics per day to... Clinic patients per day to 30. Patient clinics to 30? Okay, whatever. Uh, either way, I think if things go back to normal tomorrow with regards to the number of patients visiting the hospital, the number of, uh, the number of patients that haven't been swayed by a local tabloid, if, 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 we're able to, we're able to get back to pretty much full, uh, full patient capacity, we're probably going to stop accepting Medicare patients because that is going to take us, like, far above our, like, ability to effectively treat patients. Yeah, I think so. I think so, anyway. I think that's the case. Uh, right, opening a clinic at any specialized department. This is something else that we, we probably want to do. Uh, fairly soon. Treating 45 clinic patients per day. I don't think that we're going to manage to do that today. How did a patient go? How did you, how did you not? What? Leaving? No, 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 no. It's, be oh, it's because clinic hours ended. I see. Okay, so that was, that was part of the problem is that it took too long. It took too long to treat. Took too long to treat the patient. Viral tonsillitis, bacterial tonsillitis. Okay. Either way, I'm pretty sure that the treatment is the same. Oh, no, it's not. Well, just give them antibiotics anyway, eh? Okay, let's pay off a little bit more of the loan. That takes us back down to four grand. That's cool. Happy with that. Three patients untreated at the end of the day. Not happy with that. Rooms with critical workload. Presumably two doctor's offices. Uh, I've got to imagine that it's two doctor's offices. Yeah, it's two doctor's offices. Okay, so, I mean, look, that just highlights that we actually need more doctor's offices in order to, in order to continue to offer the level of treatment that we're offering all of our patients and that is and that is a good opportunity actually it's a good opportunity to build more doctor's offices right so prestige isn't i was way to say isn't quite as high as it was yesterday however it's shot right up to 95 percent, which is excellent let's skip forward let's skip forward patient numbers are back to normal 70 flipping patients i mean that is too many it's too many patients like that is that is a no okay so who pays more cheapo care or medicare um cheapo care pays more i i think treating 40 patients per day is, is going to be a challenge even in and of itself so let's not let's not risk let's not risk adding yet more uh, what do we need to do? What do we want to accomplish today? As I say, have no untreated patients for seven days is a is a good, good, good idea. Open general surgery department clinic. I mean, if we open the general surgery department clinic, then that would fulfill two insurance objectives because it would it would allow us to fill the cheapo care objective, which is open a clinic at any specialized department. These are all of the specialized departments. And then I can't see it just down here. That would unlock that too. So you know what? Maybe... Maybe opening a general surgery department clinic is not the craziest thing in the world. We've got rather a lot of space. I wonder where the heck we want to do that. Um, yeah, we got a lot of we got a lot of space up here. I mean, we could just use the blueprint. We could just use the blueprint that we've got over here. I mean, that's not the that's not the worst idea that I've ever had. In fact, that's actually a it's actually a pretty it's actually a pretty good idea as ideas go. Okay, do we want to do this before? before the world wakes up i think maybe we do maybe we do okay let's take out a good decent chunk of chunk of change as a loan hospitalization yeah that's not gonna that's not gonna happen zone this as a cleaning closet excellent zone this as a reception 
Zone this as a waiting room. Wonderful. So far, so good. General surgery offices. Easy enough to build. General surgery doctor's offices. Yep, yeah, just, just straight up. Build it in there. Build it in there. Build it in there. This is so cheap. This is so very, very cheap. Five offices. Is this overkill? I suspect that it probably will be, given that we won't actually need that many. Restroom. Excellent. Throw that in there. Uh, common room. Yeah, again, you know, there's nothing There's nothing fancy about this. There's nothing fancy about this. It's just the prefabs. We're, uh, we're just going to make it work. Uh, yep, let's throw in a reception desk middle. That should be totally adequate. Let's throw in an office chair, throw in a PC, and that's that's a receptions. It's a receptions area, receptionist's area. Cool. Q machine. Excellent. Don't know why it's glowing red. A little bit funky. Okay. Excellent, 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 and excellent. Okay, that is looking that is looking really, really good. And all we need to do is make sure that these rooms are accessible, hire the doctors, and then we're in the money. It's, it's brilliant. It's that simple. That was not where I wanted to... Not where I wanted to put that double glass door. That's where the double glass door goes. That's where the double glass door goes. Okay, now that should work. All of the rooms are there. Doctors, give me one singular doctor. A cheap one, of course. A cheap doctor. Excellent! We did it. Liver TY can be contracted to send patients. And insurance objectives completed. Open clinic at any specialized department. And the reward is hospitalization at emergency. 20,000 government grant as well for completing that objective. That is pretty darn good if you ask me. The good thing is, is that even with all of these additional insurance objectives, right? Even with all of the additional insurance objectives, I'm still not managing to break even. I mean, I would be able to break even if I... Uh, if I sort of if I sort of waited a little bit and didn't immediately try and treat everyone, but the point that I'm trying to make is that I feel like it's 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 in quite a good place. Uh, the insurance companies are in are in quite a good place. I'm going to accept these patients actually. Treat one patient per day at any specialized department. Easy, 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 easy. That is totally fine. Uh, enable hospitalization at emergency. Enabling hospitalization at emergency is a big commitment. Treat, tre uh, treat three patients per day at the general surgery department. That's fine. Okay, so now we can accept patients in the emergency clinic and also the general surgery uh, department clinic. That's fine. We will do exactly that as we progress onwards. Let's skip fast forward. We want to make sure that no patients remain untreated. That's what we're after today. That is what we are after. Hopefully... Hopefully we should be fine. Oh, the other thing that I need to do is I need to hire a receptionist here. Who's qualified as a receptionist? Just kidding. Doesn't actually matter who's the cheapest. There we go. Congratulations. All right. Visiting hours are open. Now, how do we enable the night shift? How do we enable the night shift? How do we enable the... How do we enable the clinic in the, in the evening? I think that's a... I think it's an insurance objective, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's an insurance objective. So we got that to look forward to. A 24-hour-a-day clinic. Okay. Patient intake is at 105%, which is grand. Insurance payment, it is 120%. Patient with incorrect diagnosis returns. You had a chest contusion? Uh, that's really strange. That's really, really strange. Uh, I mean, that's, that's a bit of a problem. That is a bit of a problem. Here's the issue. Here's the issue. The issue is is that we only treat patients to a medium degree of certainty. I'm going to set it to a high degree of certainty. The problem with setting with setting it to a high degree of certainty is that it, we, we, you know, we're able to guarantee basically that patients will be diagnosed correctly, but it does mean that the doctors will run more tests to uh, affirm their thoughts on a patient's condition. So, you know, we got to be careful about that. We got to be careful about that. It's definitely something that we should be wary of. Uh, we're almost certainly going to need to hire some brand new doctors for the general surgery department clinic. Okay, let's hire two more doctors. Yeah, cheap doctors. Excellent. And so we can now diagnose specific cases. What are you doing here, bud? Brooke? What, what are you doing? You're just chilling out? I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, I, I appreciate that. Okay? Don't understand why you were only suddenly able to move there, but... Sure, I guess. That's fine, too. 
All right, how are things going downstairs? Things are going well downstairs. This this receptionist's desk is, I mean, it's a travesty. It looks awful, doesn't it? Looks genuinely dreadful. Prestige is looking all right, though. It's always the lowest in the middle of the day. It's always the lowest in the middle of the day. And to be fair, we probably do need to try and complement all of these departments by getting some cleaning staff in. That is that is kind of what we're after. Hey, treat one per patient per day at uh, at a specialized department. We've unlocked hospitalization for general surgery. Uh, hospitalization at general surgery is, I mean, it's it's huge. It's a uh, boy, oh boy, oh boy. It's a big un. It's a big un. It allows us to get operating theaters, etc. I mean, that is that is terrifying. Genuinely terrifying that we're going to be able to conduct operations very, very shortly indeed. Um, do we need to get more doctor's offices just down here? I, I feel like maybe we do, you know? Maybe we actually do. But I also kind of don't want to do that quite yet. As I feel like we've got enough doctor's offices at this moment in time. Although, look, look at the number we've got. We've got a huge number, huge number of patients that are still waiting over here. And we've got lots of space. We've got lots of space to... to treat them. I just... Hmm, I just don't know. I just don't know, folks. I uh, I just don't know. It is staff lunchtime, so... looks like everyone's gonna go on a little bit of a break for a while, but that's fine. We've only treated tre uh, 10 patients at the end of today. That is kind of unacceptable. That is kind of unacceptable. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Let's, let's compromise. Let's compromise. Let's add a couple of extra... Uh, doctor's offices. Let's add, what, like three more? One, two, three more. Okay, two more I'll have to do. I don't really want to take out any more debt. Intern, yep. And, wow, really, really expensive. Expensive doctors. Comparatively expensive doctors, that is. Anyway, the more doctors that we have, the faster we're going to be able to treat patients, the faster that we're going to be able to generate cash flow which is obviously a good thing. But the fact that we've only treated 13 out of 52 patients, or 51 patients, at the end of today is is kind of ridiculous. Again, this is because we've set the, the certainty level to high, so now we've got a whole bunch of doctors that are doing a whole bunch of additional tests for pretty much no reason. And that's going to put a lot of extra strain on our... Uh, on our radiology department and also our medical labs department. How are we doing, actually, in the medical labs department? Yeah, see, look at this. Look at this. We've got 12 patients that are waiting for test results here. Uh, I mean, look, this is this is not good. This is not good. We're going to increase the number of technologists that we have in this area. So this is kind of obscene. But we have no way around this. We have no way around this at all. General surgery is looking is looking Okay. 15 patients waiting. Wow. All of these patients are going to get told to go home if we cannot figure out what their issue is by the uh, by the end of the day. The thing about the thing about waiting for tests, I believe, is that technically people will come back the next day if they have not got a test result. Yeah, 18 patients still waiting. Look at that absolutely dreadful and that that should be used as an example of what the heck happens when you bump up certainty to high i said that i wanted high certainty maybe i do not want sir, uh, high certainty honestly i think that we would rather have i think that we would rather have medium certainty yeah honestly i think that that's probably for the best prestige is looking good at emergency and radiology medical labs it's looking like abysmal why is that Patient satisfaction is is zero. Satisfaction of staff needs critical. I mean, it's not good, obviously, but it should increase a little bit. It increases to seventy four percent. Again, that's that's too low, to be honest. That's too low, too low, too low. Okay, we need to address this first and foremost with a with a cleaning room. Uh, of course, I'm out of cash. I should do this tomorrow morning after my... After my uh, after my debt is paid. I'm going to take out a 20 grand loan. I'm going to take out a 20 grand loan. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. Bad day, honestly. Bad day. Bad day. Not a good day. Okay, take out a 20 grand loan. Give me like a 4x4. Four four. Sure. 
Give me like an expansion of the walls. Fine. Head up to the next level. Do I need to build foundation here too? I do, apparently. Weird. Okay, build walls there. Excellent. Then what we're going to do is we're going to stick in a door here. I hate the type of type of walls that we've got, by the way, but that's fine. Walls over there. Excellent. Then let's go into medical labs. We're going to get a cleaning closet over here. Missing equipment. I'm very aware. We're going to grab a cleaning closet. Yep. Cleaning closet over here. Then we're going to go and get some shelves. And we are going to go and get some bucket carts as well, which are optional, but do make uh, a big old difference, I believe. Uh, let's hire some janitors then. Janitor one, janitor two, and we'll also hire a janitor during the evening. So that's three janitors over there. Medical labs, let's swap into medical labs mode. Excellent. One, two, three, four. And we'll get one janitor during the day, two janitors during the day one janitor during the evening. Okay, so that is a that is a janitor that's going to be able to hopefully scrub the place clean over the course of the evening. Yesterday's prestige reached 93%. That was a little bit higher than I initially anticipated, but I guess that's good. Uh, general surgery also needs a bunch of cleaning staff. There we go. Three of those. And let's see if we can just hire like one singular janitor. It's not much. It's not much janitorial work. That needs to get done. But it is it is something at least. Okay. 51 patients that we're going to be trying to treat over the course of today. Only a medium level of certainty. How many, how many patients still need to have their test results filtered through here? Only four. Only four need, need test results. So that's four people that I think that should be coming back today from the clinic yesterday. Which will help. Which will help with our numbers today. If we're able to appropriately treat all of them. Then that would be... That would be really, really good. I'm just going to go into radiology real quick. And I'm going to zone this all as a corridor. I'm going to zone this as a radiology corridor as well. So let's get it all done, please. Let's get it all done. Get all of that cleaned up. Right. Treating 45 patients per day is definitely an ambition. Treating three patients per day at general surgery, also an ambition. Yeah. Also, i tell you what we should do. Let's just make it a nice, even six doctor's offices over here. So we'll hire one final doctor and one additional, build one additional doctor's office. And we will hire the cheapest person here. Frank King, congratulations. Welcome to the team. I hope you're, I hope you're a decent doctor. Okay. Looks like general surgery is looking fine. We've got three doctors up here. That's more than enough. Yep. Everything is looking, everything is looking fancy. Everything is looking fresh, everything is looking fancy, everything is looking grand. We've got three people that are idle, and I do not understand why on earth they decide to idle over there. But that's fine. Wow. Look at this. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. It's 10 o'clock in the morning, and we've got a full waiting room. I, I actually think that we might straight up be way past our... Way past our ability... Yeah, we got too many patients. We got too many patients. We got far too many patients, I think, for the number of doctors that we actually have. I mean, general surgery, we could do with hiring, like, two more doctors here as well. But the thing is that, am I growing too fast? Am I growing too fast? Am I treating enough high-value patients in order to in order to break even? Because we've not had a single day where we've not sent away untreated patients. Today could be that day. I'm certainly hoping that it is. Right. So, nobody's waiting for radiology results. A lot of people are waiting for test results at the microbiology lab. To be honest, having four technologists working in this room is good. Treat three patients per day at the general surgery department. Next two interns available will be great candidates. Excellent. Interns are very, 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 very cheap to hire. Treat five patients per day at any specialized department. I was waiting to say, we're just about to hit that anyway, so that's not too bad at all. Let's pay down our debt then. Wow, zero debt? Who is this guy? Who is this guy? Orbital potato? Is this a new potato? New me? No debt? No debt potato? I don't believe it. Okay, hire a couple of additional technologists over here. 
you know what, we'll just hire up to the max. We'll just hire up to the max in each and every room. Again, you know, the the department, the medical labs department, is just a straight money loser. It is, it is guaranteed to lose your money. But that's okay. We want to make sure that everyone is being tested as rapidly as possible. Presumably, we're going to need more rooms than just this. You know, medical labs are... They, you know, very time intensive. The, the, they take a long time to deliver tests, but they do help clarify much more precisely exactly what is wrong with a certain person. So that's kind of nice. Hey, treat 45 patients per day, increase patient clinics per day to 25. That's excellent. Treat 50 patients per day. I dare say that that is a very, very strong likelihood of that occurring today. Yeah, we've just got a couple of additional patients to treat. Hey, look at that. Prestige bonus of 20% for one day. Brilliant. Love to see it. Love, love, love to see it. We've actually treated 54 patients per day. 55? So that, again, is because we still had patients waiting for test results from yesterday. Uh, either way, is that is that 100% success rate over the course of today? I think it is. I think it is. So when the clinic closes, will there be anyone waiting? Oh, there were five patients waiting. I've got to imagine that those five, yeah, those five people are still waiting for test results. Oh, flippin' heck. Seven patients, eight patients, nine patients, ten patients end up being disgruntled and unhappy with the service. Yeah, that's not, uh, that's not too good. That's not, uh, not, not too good at all. I mean, look, the, the way that we solve this, the way that we solve this is, is by trying to, is by trying to get the, by trying to get the clinic opened during the evening. Yeah, so clinic, clinic patients are now accepted 24-7, which is great. Should I save that we can, if we can do this? So we'll get, sure, we'll get two, two great candidates, two great candidates. Clinic patients are now accepted during the entirety of the evening. Let me see if we can run the... Let me see if we can run these rooms at like half strength in the evening. There we go. There we go. And there we go. Okay. I don't love this, but it. I think it's a, I think it's a good strategy. Okay. I was hoping that we could perhaps avoid this, but uh, I don't think that there is a way to avoid this. We are... We're committed now. Okay. Two cleaners during the night. Thank you very much. Excellent. Let's let's get cleaning this place up. It looks it looks dreadful. It looks absolutely abysmal. Right, 100% prestige. Real nice. Real happy with that. We're going we're going forward to the next day with like zero debt. The good news is is that even without all of the extra grant money that we've been receiving, our hospital is still technically making money, which is a really good indication of how well we're doing. Uh, yeah, so pretty happy with that. Do we have anyone waiting for test results? Nobody's waiting for test results. So tomorrow is going to be like a really really good litmus test. How are we doing? Are we able to to make sure that we have no untreated patients? Because that is what that is what I'm all about. No untreated patients would be would be excellent. Also, general surgery. This needs to be added as a general surgery corridor. Excellent. Cool. Uh, and then this needs to be added as a microbiology. No, not a microbiology. You get the picture. You know what I mean. Uh, a medical labs, a medical labs corridor. Yeah, you can see the dirt starting to accumulate here, and it's, it's. I mean, it's unbecoming. It's unbecoming of a hospital of this stature. Anyway, for the first time in a long time, Jordan Jones. That's fine. Renovation of a nearby clinic causes fifty percent more patients to come. Uh, I mean, that's fine. To be to be fair. Um, yeah, that, that's that's okay. We still have not decided to accept. Medicare patients. As soon as I do, I'm actually going to get a 50,000 government grant, which is quite nice. I just don't feel comfortable accepting the Medicare patients. It's just going to take us way over the top. I, I feel like I need to try and get no untreated patients in the first instance. And after that, we'll be able to look at, uh, at accepting more patients. Either way, today is going to be, you know, sort of the day, the day to really test what the situation is. We're able to, we're able to accept patients like 24 hours a day now, which is, which is great. Uh, we don't have any doctors in the general surgery department over the course of the evening. Uh, we're also going to have to pay for the upkeep of night staff at this moment in time, which is, which is not exactly ideal. Uh, I did rather want to avoid this, but that's fine. Two doctors, two doctors on call during the evening might help to address some of the, uh, some of the issues that we've got. Okay, cool. Let's see exactly what happens. We've got the day shift starting right now, which is grand. We've managed to treat three patients before the sun even comes up, which is really, really, really good. 
What can I say? I'm happy with that. Okay. We are all in. We are all in on 24-hour-a-day clinics. It's going to make a big old difference, I think. 55 patients today. 55 patients per day. That is the... Uh, that is the test. Are we going to be able to do it? Leaving no patient untreated is the objective. And we need to do that for seven days, which is quite a long time. Quite a long time, actually. Now that I think about it. But that's okay. The hospital is looking very, very clean. Very, very clean. I don't think there's a speck of dirt anywhere to be seen. Brilliant. A master scientist. Lovely. Good on you. Uh, yeah, so at 11 o'clock in the morning, 22 patients are already treated. I mean, that's not a bad, that's not a bad, not a bad result, actually. All right, infectious diseases. I mean, how likely are we to be able to open up an infectious diseases clinic? I mean, well, a clinic is, is, is reasonably easy to do. It's the hospitalization that's the tough part. That's also where all the juicy, juicy, juicy stuff is, you know? So I, I mean, I'm confident, quietly confident, but also pensive, scared, apprehensive. Apprehensive is probably the term that I'm looking for there. Okay, so at 1 o'clock in the morning, 36 out of 55 patients have been treated. That's that's not half bad, not half bad at all. How are we doing at the, at the lab department? Two patients, two patients. Okay, we're, we're looking, we're looking fine. We're looking fine, we're looking fresh, we're looking funky. Now, how much yesterday did this medical lab department cost me? 1,500 bucks today, 2,600 yesterday. Okay, I, wait, I, I dare say that it's going to cost a lot more, a lot more tomorrow, or at the end of today, as we look back. It's going to cost a lot of money. The good news, by the way, about having... Uh-oh, patient can't be fully treated. IV antibiotics. Oh, no. No, 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 no. So IV, IV antibody. The patient is getting ready to leave, can't be treated. I mean, can you not just be treated with regular antibiotics? You can be treated with regular antibiotics, but you need hospitalization. We need hospitalization in order to make this work. Okay, well, look, you know, this is the this is the quality of care that I'm prepared to give to my patients. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to build a bespoke ward just for you. That's right. Give me a regular a regular ward right in here. Excellent. This is what it's all about. This is what healthcare is all about, folks. Right. Delete that wall. Delete that wall. Now, you can be hospitalized, right? Can you be hospitalized right now? Night shift not staffed. Uh, is it because... Is it because we need to get all of the corresponding hospitalization infrastructure before we're able to actually open up hospitalization? I think that is... Oh, man, this is such a massive pain in the backside. So, do I commit... Do I commit to hospitalizing... Hospitalizing this one patient... Code blue, treat this patient with the same priority as critical patients. Sure. You can't be treated. Oh, man, that's so irritating. I, I'm not so irritated about the fact that I've built a... That's oh, so annoying. Not irritated about the fact that I've built a, uh, a regular ward. You know, that's something that we're going to be able to make use of as we, as we go, for sure. I mean, this is going to be general surgery area that hopefully will be open to hospitalization. We're going to get that set up soon, I hope. Uh, the irritating thing... The irritating the irritating thing is that we, you know, yet again have got a, a patient that can't be treated. The good news about having a, a clinic that works 24 hours a day is that patients will no longer leave after, you know, the clinic closes. So the clinic is open now 24 hours a day, and therefore people will be happy to wait even past the point of the old 6 o'clock closing time. 
Look at that. So unbelievably close. Well, you know what? This is this is good. This is good. This is fine. We we almost we almost got across the line there. I can't believe it. It was so darn close, but it was not to be. Uh, right. So at the end of the first episode, at the end of the first episode, we're in a pretty good financial position. Uh, he said as he just lost uh, a little bit more, a little bit more cash. Look, we don't have any debt. We don't have any debt. We've got a we've got a a good uh, a good a good variable profit. I think that's the technical term. Economics. 101, etc. Uh, yeah, so we got a good variable, variable profit, and I'm pretty happy with that. We're probably going to be profitable by the uh, the close of play today. We are indeed. Uh, we have no debt outstanding, which is wonderful. So, ladies and gents, we'll have to see what the heck happens in the next episode. I'm hopeful in the next episode we're going to be able to get the infectious diseases department up and running. However, you'll have to tune in and find out. Thanks, as ever, to the fantastic Patreon supporters. As I say, we've just finished a Project Hospital Patreon series over there, so if you are interested in helping make this channel work, make this channel possible, um, you know, check it out. Also, thanks to Banana Nana and C Senpai for being the two $25 plus tier patrons. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll see you next time. Bye.